Nobody likes slow internet, and I know I personally hate it. So, in an effort to combat this, I made a Twitter bot that complains to my ISP whenever my internet is slow. Twitter's developer platform provides a powerful API for extracting data from Twitter that can also be used to send tweets, pictures, direct messages, and more. By combining this with Python's scheduling library and speed testing client, we can calculate our internet speed and automatically tweet at the ISP whenever our cat videos are loading too slowly. First, we'll install all the libraries we need, like speed test and the Twitter API library. Next, we'll use speed test to get our upload and download speed. This will require a little bit of arithmetic to get the numbers we need. Then, we'll create a Twitter API instance using authorization tokens, and after that, we'll use the Twitter API to tweet at the ISP when upload and download speeds are less than 80% of what they advertise. And to bring it all together, we'll use Python's scheduling library, Sketch, to make this run every hour. All the code from this project is in our GitHub repo, so check that link out in the description below and follow along. Let's start by installing the libraries we'll use. Open the command prompt and type pip install Twitter API, and this will install the Twitter API. I already have the Twitter API installed because I recently made a video tracking tweets about the royal family. Check out the link in the description below if you're interested. Installing the speed tester is a little different. To be able to use speed test CLI in our script, we'll have to use a curl statement. Type curl hyphen o followed by a link to the speed test file to download it to our local directory. The O parameter is what tells curl to download the file. You can find the link to the speed test file in the description below. The rest of the libraries are already available in Python by default, so now we can get started. Let's begin by importing libraries. Namely, we need to import Twitter API, speed test, scheduler, and time. Now let's write a function for checking internet speeds. Let's call it check speeds. We create a speed tester by calling speedtest.speedtest. This will run an internet speed test that tracks our upload and download speeds. We can get the download and upload speeds by calling the download and upload methods. These methods return download and upload speed in bits, which can be a pretty gross to look at. So let's convert these to megabits so we have a clear idea what the speed actually is. There are 1 million bits in a megabit, so we'll divide both numbers by a million. We'll also cast the numbers to integers so they're represented as whole numbers. Let's print these out and run the script so we have a sense of our internet speeds now. Great, these speeds look fine, but we know they can dip at any time. To trigger a tweet, we're going to use the threshold of observed speeds being less than 80% of advertised. This seems like the right balance because ISPs often don't perform as advertised. So if we used a higher threshold, our Twitter feed would be overwhelmed with these complaints. Quick side note on hardware. There may be a problem with your hardware if you're consistently seeing speeds below this threshold or if you're seeing speeds far below this threshold. Try moving the router, using a Wi-Fi extender, or connecting directly to the modem via Ethernet cable. Okay, so the next step is creating a Twitter API instance. The Twitter API administers massive amounts of data, and Twitter developer ensures the data is secured for users through authorization tokens. In order to work with the Twitter API, every developer needs to have a consumer key, a consumer secret key, an access token key, and an access token secret key. These are distributed by Twitter developer and require you to have a developer account. There's a link to the signup page in the description below. Once you make a Twitter developer account, you need to create a Twitter developer app, generate your app's API keys and user access token, generate your app's bearer token, and apply for the desired API endpoint. Now let's create a Twitter API instance by calling Twitter API. Then we'll use os.getenv to call each key. I'm storing these keys in .env files for privacy. Lastly, plug the keys into the Twitter API instance. Before we start tweet complaining to Xfinity, I want to tell you a little bit about Kite, which we're using in this video to code faster. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. 
So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. Cool, now we're ready to start tweeting at my ISP. We want to set our tweetbot up so it will tweet if download or upload speeds fall below 80% of what is advertised using an if statement. Then we can draft the copy of the tweet our bot will send. I want to be nice to Comcast, so I'm going to send them a nice message asking if they know why my speeds are slower than advertised. But you can have the tweetbot say anything you want. To send the tweet, we call api.request. This takes two parameters. The first is the name of the API endpoint, which for us is statuses slash update. Statuses slash update authorizes the associated Twitter account to tweet a message. The second parameter is a dictionary containing more specifications about the request, which for us is the message or status we would like to tweet. Cool, let's give it a go and see what happens. It looks like our internet passed this test, so we didn't send a tweet. But speeds can fall at any time. We'll want to run this script on a regular basis so we're prepared for when our speeds do fall, which we can do with the schedule library. Our event scheduler will require two functions to work. One to determine the time of the test via the time module from the time library, and another to determine the delay until the next test via the sleep module from the time library. From there, we use the enter method to add it to the schedule and the run method to start running the events on the schedule. In its current form, our scheduler enters and runs events in what we call one-off fashion, meaning once the event is completed, that's that. We still need to make this event reoccur on a specified interval. To do this, we need the scheduler, the timing interval, and the check speed method. Let's call this parameter action. It also needs an arguments parameter in order to pass any parameters to the action we want to call. Now we can implement the periodic speed tests by passing an interval as the argument for the action parameter of our scheduler function. In addition to the interval, we need to specify its priority, which is one, and the name of the periodic check function. As mentioned previously, we need to provide the arguments for periodic check and we do so in the form of a tuple. After that, we need to call our action method to check internet speeds and issue tweets if speeds are slow. Since we have the number of checks and speed totals as parameters, we need to provide them from the arguments tuple. Last but not least, we need to call periodic check to start the scheduling loop and run the scheduler. Here, we're telling periodic check to run check speeds every 3600 seconds, which is one hour. The internet at Kite is really fast, two gigabits fast. So we're going to use the advertised speeds from the Gigabit Pro package as our reference. I'll change the speeds accordingly in our script. Okay, let's give it a run and see what the people at Xfinity have to say for themselves. Twenty percent slower than advertised. Though the performance isn't great, it isn't terrible either, so we provided a polite response for Comcast. Now 50% slower than advertised, that's unacceptable. So a response could perhaps be a bit more stern. You can actually play around with different messages for different performance shortfalls by modifying the conditions in line 29 of the code. Check out the example in the description box below. And look at that, it worked. Comcast actually saw and responded to our complainer bot, and they shared advice on how to increase our performance. They probably never knew that they were dealing with an algorithm rather than a living, breathing customer. And there it is. With the help of speed test, the Twitter API, and a little bit of Python, I no longer have to annoy Xfinity on my own when the internet is slow. This all happens automatically now via tweets. 
Hopefully by watching this video, you've learned something about APIs and automation using Python. If this video inspires you to use the Twitter API and speed test for your own spectacular project, please share it in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more awesome programming projects. And don't forget to check out Kite, the AI autocomplete plugin. It's free and the link's in the description below.